dudes and dudettes. How are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to What's the Damage. You know today joined by the very crappy lighting. It's overcast. It might rain later. The sun is not out today. The lighting might be a little blah, a little blah today. You know, I didn't shave my neck. I forgot to shave. Actually, I didn't forget. I just, you know, I didn't have enough time, you know. Should have done it yesterday. You know, I'm in a little bit of a rush, you know. I'm not necessarily rushing through the videos, but I am trying to record as much as I can because I'm a little behind on schedule right now. But anyway, so today on uh, What's the Damage, I'm going to be discussing something that I have never even so much as hinted at here on this channel but uh, here's the thing in case you guys don't know I work with photography outside of YouTube I am actually a professional photographer you know I even have a not exactly a degree but I uh I did a professional course some time ago, you know, for uh, about a year or so, and I actually have a diploma, a, cert a certification. That doesn't really mean anything. It's just that I wanted to show off here. I, <laughs> I just wanted to flex something here for you guys, not to show that I actually am a photographer. But uh, a few years ago, I was in love with photography, you know, and I tr and I tried to get, uh, I tried to work with it, you know, make some money on the side, you know. But it got a little complicated. However, um, I do still like it, you know. It's not, the passion isn't really the same. I actually have been doing much more YouTube and photography lately, but. The thing is that I think it's still a very, very interesting art, you know, and I have some very strong opinions about photography that might divide some people, you know, and the, this very video itself is, uh, is inspired by a conversation that I was having. Uh, I, I would say argument, but we didn't exactly argue, but it was a very tense conversation between me and another photographer on Twitter, you know, who I actually happen to admire a lot, you know, uh, we've had a few conversations over the years, she's always inspired me, but this conversation in particular wasn't really too pleasant, but we were talking about the idea that photography, uh, like she thinks that photography is something that you can use to uh, manipulate for your own benefit, you know, it all started when I re we replied to a thread about somebody who took a photo and he showed the original photo photo and he was pointing to a lot of things that he think were very imperfect so then he changed it he edited the photo so heavily that at the very end it didn't even look like the same thing anymore it looked very far away he even added clouds that weren't there you know and I think this is wrong me personally I think this is very wrong and the person who I was talking to thinks that it's right she disagree you know she says that uh she said that uh, if she spends uh, money, if she invests time and money to go to a place to photograph and the day that she goes, the conditions aren't the way that she wants, then she would use Photoshop, you know, to make the photo look better. But if you really think about it, aren't you essentially just lying to the person who's looking at the photo? You know, because when it comes to photography, I'm a very philosophical and emotional person, you know. I like to register moments and leave them the way they are. I do like to edit my photos, obviously, but not in the way that other people do. Like I like to mess around with the tones, the saturation, the vibrance to make it pop a little bit more, but I otherwise don't do anything else to the photo. I don't like, if there's a blade of grass in a place that I don't like, I don't go and take, I don't erase it, you know? I don't ever uh, take things away from people's faces. Like I don't do the whole uh, Vogue magazine photo shoot where I make their, uh, their faces completely uh, clean. Even though like, because if the person wants to put up makeup to do a photo, to put on makeup to do a photo shoot with me, that's their choice, you know? So the photo is going to come out the way that, that, that they already made themselves look out to be with the makeup, you know? I The only the only times that I ever remove any blemishes or, I don't know, uh, pimples or whatever the, uh, from people's faces are when they specifically ask me to and I'm being paid for it, you know? Because if you're paying for something, you're going to get what you paid for, of course. But no, I otherwise leave my photos as natural as I possibly can. Now, the reason that I have an attachment, you know, such a strong bond with the original unedited photos is because you registered a moment that happened at a certain, you know, uh, place in time, you know, in your life or something else that was going on, you know, because photography is a way for you to essentially freeze life and capture it as it happens, you know, you are capturing a moment in time and you have it frozen to look upon later forever, you know, this is a really big deal for me. It's one of the things that made me love photography in the first place, you know, because you go to a an event and you take many photos you are immortalizing that event forever with those photos you know so when you go around and mess around too much with it you know and make a lot of changes you're, you're, you're it's it's almost like you're distorting the memory of the actual event you know so I think that it's wrong for you to heavily edit a photo you know there should be a limit like if you go to a place and you take a photo and the sky was cloudy okay why like actually that's not a good example the sky was clear there was not a cloud in sight like that's what you have that day man when you went there that day that's what the sky looked like 
you know so your memory of that day is a clear crystal blue sky so if you go into Photoshop and you put in some clouds there you are already distorting your own memory of the place you know because as the years go by, what if you lose the original photo? What if you only have the one that you edited? And then you won't even remember if the sky was crystal clear that day or if it was cloudy because of the clouds you added, you know? So when it's 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 literally what models do, you know? Like when you, uh, usually it's not even their fault, but sometimes when an agency photographs a model, you know, they will distort the photo so much in Photoshop and make her look so much more attractive than she, ever, than she is in real life that it actually angers people like me. I was a victim of this a long time ago when I was doing a photo shoot in 2016 and I photographed a girl who was a very sweet thing you know we ended up becoming friends you know it was actually really nice it was a good uh, a good day for the photos you know but like even though the photo shoot itself came out okay I was tricked because the photo of her that I saw online showed me a tall a girl who appeared to be tall height is something that you it's kind of like hard to look in photos but i'm guessing she was wearing high heels but it looked to me like a very tall and thin you know very uh, attractive uh, girl not that girls who aren't thin aren't attractive god i have to say this because everybody is butt hurt today on the internet Okay, you know what? I saw a very thin and hot girl, okay? And uh, I just thought that she would be very nice to photograph. She looked like a supermodel, you know, not a plus size model. So then I like, you know what? I'm gonna photograph her. Then when we actually did the photos, when I saw her in real life for the first time, she was actually kind of fat and even a little chubby. She was a little plump. So, okay, this is not the girl who I saw in the photo of the agency that I wanted to hire her from, you know? So this is the case of, it's kind of like a mistaken identity, you know? So you will alter and edit a photo so much that the person in the photo is going to look almost like uh they're going to not even resemble their real life counterpart because the photo that I that I saw of this girl had it, like when I saw her in real life it didn't look like the same person man like if you squint really hard and she tries to do the same pose that she did in that photo then you can kind of make out the same features but I was tricked there's no way around it you know I was really really tricked and I to this day I'm so peeved with that and it's one of the things that fueled the the fires of anger inside of me for people who edit photos way too much you know because you're lying to people People, man you know you're you're making the photo look different than it actually is and you're telling a story that's not even true that never even happened okay let me explain a little bit more about the storytelling thing that I just said you know uh, when you take a photograph you are telling a story whether you want to uh, see it or not there is a story there in that photo there are people who are very good visual storytellers I used to be one myself but because I stopped doing photography I kind of grew out of it a little bit but every photo should tell a story not necessarily you writing a story in the caption on Instagram but you actually uh, taking the photo in a certain way that will draw attention to something and there will be a story to be told there in that specific photo okay so because you have a photo for example of, of a landscape or something or somebody doing something or maybe even an animal doing something you know if you edit this photo too heavily then you're telling a story but a wrong one you're telling a story that is not the same as what the original photo told you know photography used to be really good back in the day when we could use those vintage cameras where it came out with sort of like a, an old school effect that today we call retro you know there's even a, there are some photography styles you know, of editing that are literally called uh, old school photographs you know so old school photography so it looks really good because of this but I still think that like uh, back in the day it was good because there was no editing if the photo came out crappy that's the way it was gonna stay you know but today if anything comes out slightly wrong you know or slightly unsatisfactory to the person who took the photo they'll go on Photoshop and just change so many things back when Rio de Janeiro I used to be friends with this guy who was so addicted to Photoshop you know and uh and uh his friend too who lived in the same street they were so addicted to this and so obsessed you know that they couldn't take a single photo without photoshopping it you know like every single photo on their social networks was photoshopped you know there was something that was done and uh, this kid this guy was really short you know so he made himself look tall you know in the photos he made himself look buffer you know he took away any imperfections made his skin always look crystal clear he was a dark fellow you know but I guess he didn't really like being almost black so he want he uh, he made made himself look a little uh, with light skin you know so I, I don't know man you know it just gets to the point where and the girl his friend you know she used to make herself look thinner than she actually was so 
it's just kind of aggravating. They're like, hey, it's all you. I understand that sometimes it might be self-esteem issues. You know, if you Photoshop yourself a lot, you know, you just want to make yourself look better because Photoshop gives you the tools to do so. But take into consideration that if you use too much Photoshop on yourself, you know, in real, if somebody sees uh, many Photoshop photos of you and then they, they see you in real life, they are obviously going to be disappointed. And that's going to affect your self-esteem even more. That's going to make it even worse. So that's just my tip, you know, just you guys can't use Photoshop. I use Photoshop all the time because I, I, I do them for the thumbnails on YouTube, you know, but I never really do anything that's too heavy and dramatic, you know. I never really change too many things, you know, but it's uh, sometimes I might take away a pimple or two, but that's just because I want like, I want the thumbnail to look good, you know, but hey, in the video, the vlog itself, I look the way that I normally do naturally and I don't even mind, you know, I'm not going to start putting up, putting on makeup or anything. But yeah, guys, you know, it's all good. You can use Photoshop, but just chill, okay? Especially with photography, you can use a few filters here and there, like on Lightroom, you know, they always make the photos look better. But just try not to change too many details in the photo because it's just gonna look crappy, you know? And you're essentially lying to people, you know, whoever, the people who see your photo. But that's it, I just wanted to get my opinion out there, you know, what I think about this and that how it's really irritating to me as a, as a photographer who's been working in the field for many years. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Whether or not you guys agree or disagree shout out in the comments below let me know your opinions on this you know and also if you happen to like this video then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel because i release videos every single day okay and whew, also hit the notification bell to know exactly what time i upload because i did it completely at random you know i hope you guys are liking these concept vlogs where i just like talk to you you know without doing too many crazy editing it's all good you know so i'm gonna do these a little more frequently to get more content out okay and that's it this is chazzy signing out for now and as always i will see you guys in the next video Roll the outro screen.